So, that can't start an episode with self. Okay. Try again. I will. I'll start with this. <laughs> well, at the draft show, I told you, I was like, you do not want to get, you do not want me to punch you because it is like getting hit in the face with a sock full of golf balls. <laughs> There's nothing that's going to feel good about that. I have no meat on my hands. Make a fist. Make a fist for the camera. Show, show everybody what your fist looks like. Ready? See, see this, right? You see meat between the knuckles. When I make a fist, it's like a Budweiser crown. <laughs> it's like when you take a bottle cap and you flip it upside down and you put it right back on top of the bottle. That's what it looks like. I will cut you. Click the bell to join Hashtag Nation. You want to try that one again? As we were going through, and, you know, I always say the dust settled. The dust settled from the draft. The dust settled from the free agency period. The dust settled from a lot of things that have been going on around it. The one thing that we always bang the drum about was you got to protect Allen. you got to protect Allen. Yeah. All right. So what do they do during the offseason? They get Dorsey. Um, they had Anderson. Mm -hmm. You got Barkley there. Um... You know, you have all these things in place to help the development of Josh Allen. One of the things in helping the development of Josh Allen is to protect Josh Allen. So we look at, okay, why do they have, and just for example, why do they draft Devin Singletary? Well, you got an old running back room. Right. And Allen carried the ball seven times a game, all, right. albeit not all intentional. Right. A couple of those times he's just, he's just getting out of the pocket. You got to protect him. Why not take four of those carries and give it to another running back that's not McCoy right. or Gore or whatever? That's one. Two, you go out and you sign 17 offensive linemen to try to see who can protect your investment the, the most. Right. You draft Ford. Yep. Okay? You ended up um, trying to bolster a defense that is going to maybe give you one extra possession a game as your quarterback starts to develop. Right. You do all of this stuff. Everything is centered around protecting the franchise. Mm -hmm. When you look at it through the scope of that, everything that they have done, in hindsight, makes sense. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. You're going to sign five guards and let them fight till fight only to two the of death. them are standing. Fight to the death. Yeah. yeah. You're going to draft a stud right tackle. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're going to draft a a center. Or not, you know, I'm sorry, you're going to sign a center who is a Pro Bowl, all-pro guy that can make line calls so your quarterback doesn't have to. Right. Now at this point in his career, you could say, listen, he can he can do this, he can do that. We're going to help him out. Mm -hmm. Just just as, just as Eric Wood was making line calls for Tyrod and only allowing him to do like the reads, Right. that's what you're going to do. So everything is tailor-made for Allen to A, not have a lot on his plate. You're going to protect him. You're going to let him learn how to play this game. And hopefully, if, if it goes in that direction, and everything that has been laid out on the carpet before him, that's the reason why all these moves are being made. It's, if, he is the, if you take it as he's the central focus of everything, everything makes sense that falls with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I kept, they kept rolling around in my head this week as I was thinking about it. I'm like, hmm, why'd they do this move? Why'd they sign this guy? Why did they, oh, why do they have five tight ends? And why do they have this guy? Or why do they, why do they, you know, why do they, an undrafted free agent in, um, in Jackson? You know what I mean? Well, and I, my major contentions with the moves that the Bills had made, um, and even going through the draft process, because I went back to the draft board early this morning to say, okay, if I had to redraft the Bills, mm -hmm. knowing now, knowing what I know now, what would I change? And I mean, I wouldn't change the Oliver pick for anything, right? No. The Cody Ford pick, I was on the fence about a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I think it's a good pick. Fills a need. You, you immediately get a starter at a position to need. Perfect. Great. Mm -hmm. But I thought about, I was thinking about it going, okay, well, who else was there that I might have liked a little bit more? I start looking at the wide receivers. I'm like, well, I really liked A.J. Brown. But A.J. Brown fits the profile of a lot of the same receivers we already have on the roster. So mm -hmm. I don't think you're improving your team too much there. And you start looking at the way that the draft actually played out. And you see that Cody Ford was the last tackle that you wanted anything to do with. That he was it. 
it was a, the buck stopped there because if you weren't going to get Cody Ford, you weren't getting a tackle for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think the next one off the board after him was uh, it was a few picks later. It was a pro- it was a project tackle. I don't remember who it was. Um, was he from Wagner? No, <laughs> no he was not from Wagner University. This, this one, or this comes out. I after. know it comes out after. <laughs> I mean, the, the pick made sense. However, I didn't realize until this morning that my contention with the wide receiver position, it was all, okay, they're going to cover the underneath routes, and they've got speed guys. So they're going to cover the underneaths, they're going to cover the longs, but the middle of that field is just going to be gone, right? That Those intermediate routes, who's going to run those? And look at your tight end position. You have Jason Kroom, you have Dawson Knox. That That's who's running those intermediate routes. You're going to mm-hmm. depend on the tight end to get those intermediate routes because I think what the Bills learned last year was Allen will look at underneath. Allen's eyes are always downfield, but those tight ends, those routes are going to take a little bit longer to develop in the intermediates. So the tight ends will have time to work that and Allen won't look past them because last year they ran intermediate routes with the wide receivers and Allen would look past them, keeping his eyes all the way down the field. Yeah. Which is something you want. You want him to keep his Absolutely. eyes down the field. I, do, I, don't want to, I don't want to be critical of him yeah. keeping his eyes down the field. I don't yeah. want to sound like I'm being critical for him at but, all. But that was a poor habit that he developed at Wyoming where he, like they said, that his completion percentage would have been a lot higher if he would have just tried to dump it to a back. Mm-hmm. But no, he tried to be the hero a lot of times. He did play hero ball. And a that habit he developed of still looking down the field, still trying to make the big play, when you could just take what's, what's given to you for you know four or five yards or whatever – He's got to get that coached out of him and then right. back into him to do that. Right. Which is fine. But I think one of the things that we're missing and, and, and falsely that we're going is we say that the Bills have tight ends and they have wide receivers. And I think we've, we're falsely doing that because not every offense in the NFL now just has those two distinctions. Right. There's hybrids between there. If you had to pick two guys, I mean, just two guys off the top of my head, you got Kroon and Duke Williams are two guys, to me, that if you wanted to put in a wing roll, like on, like off the tackle, mm-hmm. you could put both of them there. Right. Kroom is not your typical pro, prototypical tight end in the no. fact that he's going to block down on a guy or he's going to pull off. Yeah. He's going to pull inside on a trap block. Mm-hmm. He's not going to do that stuff. Neither is Williams. But those two guys are kind of hybrids between the wide receiver, to me, wide receiver and quarter and uh, tight end position where, okay, we're going to go three wide and put the hybrid in. Or we're going to go two wide, one tight end, and a hybrid. So we're going to do a bunch of different things in this offensive set where you're creating um, mismatches against the defense. And once you create mismatches, then you start to tip the hand of Allen. Okay, I got this over here. I know I got this over here. Let me see what develops over here Mm -hmm. on my smash route. That didn't develop. Okay, I know I have this uh, mismatch here I can always come back to. Or I got... Sean told me he's or Shady told me he's he's leaking out in the flat. So I got all this stuff. You're encouraging the development of him by adding those types of positions, those types of mismatches on the front. Mm -hmm. And that's what Dable's number one job is to do: is to come up with. I mean, the quality control we said was good. He needs to develop a plan where he's taking advantage of mismatches in game. And I think that's why Allen was running around a lot last year was he wasn't taking advantage. He didn't know where the mismatch was because he didn't know what he had. Right. Well, and the truth of the matter is, when you look at the development of Allen and, and protecting Allen, like you're saying, um, Derek Anderson is gone because Ken Dorsey is in. You're just, it's that's a lot of miles in that room at that point, right? Because that's Dorsey's job now. That's Dorsey's job. Former quarterback, you have Anderson already there. Your intention was never to play Derek Anderson, but even being admitted that it was a mistake not getting him in the building sooner. Like being admitted that mistake. Well, like, he said he wanted to go to Disney with his kids. For five weeks? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, initially, when he said, hey, I'll let you I'll let you know. But I, I just think that there's something at play. Because if Anderson was still on board with that type of a role, why doesn't he just trade his helmet in for a visor? Because you already got Ken Dorsey. Okay, well, you know, it, it doesn't hurt you having him there. I agree. I agree. And maybe, you know, maybe he'll be a consultant. Or maybe he's just ready to pack it up. But the fact still remains that, even though you're losing Anderson, you gained Dorsey, so you're not losing anything here. No, no, but there's also, 
certain things to be said for is Dorsey going to be with Allen a lot or you know what I mean did, did they think there was a conflict between what Dorsey was telling them and what Anderson was telling them so they said listen we're not going to cut you but we're going to give you the option to retire because you're kind of giving conflicting messages going on here that's my conspiracy theories coming out sure and I, it shouldn't be the way but the fact that <laughs> we talked about it at the draft they the Broncos draft Drew Locke and Flacco unfollows everything yeah the Bills undrafted free agent. Mm -hmm. They signed Jackson. Yeah. And he's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm not yeah. going to get beat up by That's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm done. I'm it done. Game over, man. When you take a look at, you know, how they protect Allen, again, you know, to me, the offensive line piece, they they can't address it anymore. You, mm -hmm. you can't have asked a team to address this position any more than they've already done. Oh. So, it is really going to be best player wins. Period. The end. They're going to build the best line they can, and it's going to be sloppy. I have very low expectations for the way this line is going to perform early because it's all brand new. You have a new offensive line coach. You have all new players, and offensive lines take a while to gel. So I'm expecting the shuffle of line to be really sloppy at the beginning of it. But what I do expect to see is you're going to have a veteran center, you're going to have two veteran guards, and then you're going to have Dawkins and Ford on the outsides. And that's going to take a lot of pressure off Dawkins and Ford because you're going to have three very experienced interior linemen taking care of the dirty stuff and making their job a lot easier. And you're going to have very experienced running backs to help chip for those, those tackles. Oh, exactly. So... They're, the way that this is all playing out is 100% protecting Allen. You're right. And the other thing was this. This is why you draft. This is exactly the reason you draft, quote, unquote, throwback tight ends to mm -hmm. put next to these guys. Right. So yep. it gives the defender, It's. I know it's very simplistic, but it's a very big deal. You give the defender a longer route to get there. Mm -hmm. So he's got to go around the, the, the tight end. The tight end's running maybe a route up the field. And then now you 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 help the tackle out again. Yep. So it's, everything is doing. If you can if you can increase the, the probability of the tackle making the block, then you're protecting Allen. So you just do it's like a, by a association. But right. um, that's the thing that I like. Any question that I had or any question that came up to me about the Bills and the moves that they've made, if I came at it from the perspective of you got to protect Allen. Everything made sense. Yeah. And it just did. Like, you like you explained it perfectly. If you, that's your goal, that's your goal. You've, you've accomplished your goal in the offseason. Now, how this plays out and how you go from 90 players to 53 that are the best suited to become victorious during the regular season, that remains to be seen. Because I don't know what type – we still don't know what type of offense they're going to run. No, no idea. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. We're just guessing. It so is everybody. Everybody's just I know, but right it's now. so intriguing to say, okay, is he going to go – if they if they come out week one, now here's here's what's gonna here's what's gonna for me. I don't know what they're gonna do, but here's the thing for me: what's gonna be a telling sign? If they come out week one and they run thirty five times, uh -huh. and Allen throws maybe twenty passes, completes like fourteen, uh -huh. they win. You know they they win in a you know knockdown drag out brawl, and then week two he throws forty four times, and they air it out and they take advantage of that. That is going to be the telling sign for me of, okay, they're not just going in with this cookie-cutter offense and they're going to run it every week the way that they're going to run it and blah, blah, blah. They're going to go and take advantage of matchups. Uh -huh. And, if I mean, when I see that, when I see the, that variance of certain things that they're going week to week, which is a, I hate to say it, a Patriot staple, hey. that's where Dable came from. Tell Tell me it doesn't work. It does. That's, <laughs> That's unfortunate. Right. Tell me it doesn't work. <laughs> so do having uh, run-blocking tight ends. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm excited to see it. 